Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ace Gift Gaming and welcome to the pre-notes to season four 2024. So the final season of uh, the year 2024. And uh it's gonna be quite an interesting one. There's a lot of there's a few things to go over. There's gonna be a few changes that'll be coming around the channel a little bit as well. So uh, if you are looking forward to this, this is something that um I have attempted to try and do um for every single beginning of a new season um for this year but unfortunately obviously we've had a few issues we have um particularly with uh, my pc g going down um and closing end of season one 2024 which hasn't helped but i'm glad to say that this sort of thing is now back because i've now got my own pc yet again which obviously um I managed to get it um, at the beginning of uh, last season, season three. And uh, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to this because um, obviously last season, uh, the goal was basically try and keep 3k or at least be close to 3k. Obviously, we've managed to uh, get to that, but it has not been easy. And uh, there is a few things that I do want to go over. So for those of you that may be, um, you know, expecting another normal iRacing videos, these videos are more done personally for myself to reflect on what I've decided to change um, from the previous season going into the new season. Kind of like what I do with the uh, end of year going into the new year video that I do um, that always gets released on New Year's Eve just before the New Year's um, that I do at the end of the year usually. These are similar to that. So this isn't normally necessarily for uh, the wider community that maybe just wants to watch videos um, of iRacing. This is more for me personally. Um, so I do get that these won't be watched as much because of that. Uh, but this is good for you to be able to know what to expect during the next season and there's a few things to go over because there are a few things that are going to be changing uh for this season so the first things first um i'm gonna go over t something that i don't do usually normally i don't do this straight away but first of all league racing normally i don't put that in until after i've gone over what cars i normally am going to be driving first of all because by doing it this way um, it's going to be a little bit easier because it's going to be because it's a big detrimental part of uh, my live streams that I do every Wednesday um, during the week and that is that I will be still participating in the RPM GT3 championship I am still going to be a full-time driver however the small little change is is that uh, that is not going to become a priority uh, for this coming season. So what do I mean by that? Uh, so as of this week. I have started a brand new job. Uh, becoming a delivery driver. Um, I'm not going to name uh, the company that I'm working for. Um, because it is. I'm still very much new to it at the moment. I have done delivery driving before. Uh, for a couple of companies beforehand. However it has always been. Um, on my own, it's always been as a self-employed basis. This one, I'm actually am properly employed. So obviously, um, it's going to be meaning that I need to be um, as available as possible. So I can't guarantee that I will be able to do every single race uh, from this season going forward. Uh, but I have um, spoken to one of the admins within the league and obviously a ruling that he put in about a couple of season goes, I believe, is that um, a for a full-time driver to keep their full-time um, allocation, um, that they must drive at least half of the races within the season. So there's 11 rounds um, throughout each season apart from the season one um, of... Uh, that particular year which obviously is going to be next season where instead of it being 11 rounds it's nine rounds instead because they don't start it quite so early because of it obviously starting around Christmas time and they never do um, um, the first round until week two because they always follow it a week behind 
Um, so RPM, I'm still going to be driving in. Um, I haven't ultimately decided what car I'm going to be driving just yet. Um, because it's not a major focus uh, for me personally. Um, but it may still be the Porsche. Um, unfortunately, obviously, with the issues that um, iRacing has been having with um, being allowed to have the McLaren, which was a car that we was going to be testing quite a lot of to see if we prefer to just stay with the Porsche or actually move over to the brand new McLaren 720S, which was due to be released on this um, this season's build. Um it's bec it's obviously become a little bit annoying for that reason. So at the moment for me personally, I'm I may still stick with the Porsche, but I have still um got to make my mind up with regards to that just yet. Um some of the drivers within the team, we've had a few models, um a few things being um shaken around a little bit. Um as of uh yesterday um, we just had a driver just leave the team on good terms, I will admit, um, which I'm always happy with, um, which he's uh, moved on to a team of which he has a few friends with. And I have said to him, if he does want to come back, you know, for any reason, then as long as we do have space within the team, I'm more than happy to welcome him back, of course. Um, another one of our drivers is looking to drive the Lamborghini, um, which is uh, David Daniel. Um, who's going to be driving that, um, I believe. Um, he's been um, driving a few different cars, and that's what he's deciding for this season. Obviously, the, the season previous, um, we had somebody come into the team, Nigel Stock, um, in the middle of uh, the season previous, uh, season two, and uh, he didn't uh, do very well with it because it's not an easy car to drive. Um, obviously David Daniel, I do trust with his judgment, obviously, you know, like obviously I can't say to him, you need to drive this, you need to drive that. That's ultimately his decision, but I can give him recommendations, um, which is partly what, um, you know, for myself and, uh, W step, obviously who does spot for me is there for is to like, if they do have questions, we can answer them for them. Really. That's kind of like our job as, uh, you know, being, um, uh, uh people that are, higher up in the team you know being owners and principal as well um but yeah so i'm still yet to make my own personal decision on the gt3 car but gt3s are not going to be my main focus at any point during this season you may have noticed that um during the second half of last season that my motivation with driving gt3 cars had been dwindling down a little bit and uh, i will be honest um it has been something that has been a little bit annoying for me, especially in the second half of last season. I couldn't even get to grips with the Porsche very well, really, if I'm totally honest. And uh, it has been a little bit of a struggle. It has. Because, it's for me personally, it's not been as much fun to drive as it, as it has been um, at the beginning of this year um, and through the closing end of last year when I returned to iRacing properly. So, my plan is, is obviously not to be driving GT3s as a main car. Um, I am still going to be driving GT3s, but, oh, but not quite so much. Uh, definitely not as much as I have been throughout 2024. Obviously, GT3s has been my main car for the past year. It has really, to be honest. So, um, the goal for me is obviously, again... Um, just like last season, try and keep 3k. If not, stick to as close to 3k as possible. But obviously, I do want to make a secondary goal, and that is try an attempt to try and get as close to 3k as possible in the Formula um, license as well. Um, so, obviously, you may have noticed, obviously, um, a few videos have been coming about. Um, at the losing end of last season. So to announce. I'm going to be maining two different cars. Uh, for this season. So the first car you'll probably have noticed straight away. The LMP2. 
and uh, the reason for that is uh, obviously during uh, the beginning of last season I did say I was going to be maining the LMP2 car but also driving the GT3 car and I was gradually finding out you couldn't drive both you know as much as each other and expect to get to a good level with both at the same time because both cars are very very different they are they are so different in driver style driving style and how to try and drive them to a good level of where i am now compared to i was at the beginning of the year and what i've decided to do is basically bring gt3s um on the back burner a little bit i will still drive them but i'm not going to be driving them as much um as i have been like i said but lmp2 i have been finding i am really really enjoying them a lot and that is the main reason why i have decided to make this my main car for this coming season it's something that i've always enjoyed when i get into them but i think something that i've learned over the past season as well is just to try and learn how to manage your pace a little bit more in you know if if you're not quite as fast as somebody else don't force it that's something that i've had to learn the hard way and i think with um, my kind of like i rating where i have been um and this is something that i've learned in particular with uh driving uh formula cars because i did do that during the last week of uh see of season 3 2024 um which you may have noted i did uh, upload a video with that um i've learned that sometimes you know you will gain pace naturally and it's something that is difficult to necessarily learn it's something that you just come come to terms with with experience really and it's something that i would always stress to anybody else is that don't try and push the car to a point of where you are driving over the limit you know drive to what you're comfortable with while you know trying to do the best that you can and naturally that speed will come to you and sometimes you may not even realize it and lmp2s i have learned quite a bit from um in the closing end of last season which i thoroughly enjoyed driving them and i am hoping that really with going to the lmp2 class which is a car that i feel i am able to benefit from better over a gt3 car which um i feel like um i do feel like it it doesn't suit me quite so strongly like the lmp2 does um the lmp2 i'm hoping will be able to like not just keep me at 3k but maybe push me further um i think if i can try and do it i would like to try and obviously get higher and higher but at the end of the day the most important thing as well is just enjoying the racing and that's kind of why i've started going right let's drive the lmp2 a little bit more let's not think about it as oh i'm losing i rating it's the end of the world because it's not really you still get to drive alongside quality drivers you do and that's what i love a lot about i racing in general is that you get to drive against good quality drivers no matter what your i rating is it's just that the quality of drivers will just get better and better but should you be in a top quality strength of the field when you're not really quite there just yet no you shouldn't because at the end of the day you are just going to be demotivated by being put into those type of races in the first place you know it is a matter of learning more from that car will allow you to just basically um get better pace out of it because you understand the car better and and so like i would always stress to anybody you know don't force something that you're not quite able to do just yet allow it to evolve you naturally so lmp2 is my main car for this season um so obviously you've heard it correctly i did say earlier 
there are two main cars and normally i wouldn't do this sort of thing but what another thing that i want to be able to do like i said earlier on is i want to try and get into formula cars a little bit more and you know have that availability of if there is a race where the lmp2 is at and it's not the greatest of tracks maybe um there's another series that actually has a very good track car combo like during week 12 i would have actually have said i'm not going to do any racing whatsoever i only decided to race the super formula lights for week 12 which was at zandvoort only by watching one of my favorite streamers um actually do the exact same combo and i actually spoke to him about some of the negatives around Zanvor, and one of the main negatives was the difficulty with overtaking it is virtually non-existent but there was one thing i didn't realize with the super formula lights and that was that the slipstreaming potential with this particular car was actually quite high so what would be usually difficult to overtake actually made overtakes a much bigger possibility you just needed to know how to set those type of maneuvers up and also just know understand how much you could push the car before it's too much and this was something that i was gradually learning during all of week 12 you know like um for those of you that maybe saw a couple of shorts that i uh put in which was uh obviously both humorous um the start of that week didn't go the greatest because it was a car that i had not really done any racing whatsoever i was very limited with the amount of laps that i had done really in that car in general it wasn't just the track it was the car but that was just me learning the car really what was it capable of what should you do with it what should you not do with it and it was something that i was learning over time and at the coming towards the end of the week I was near enough at pace of the front runners and top split and like there was a few that would uh, be much quicker still and that was uh, mostly because obviously that's their main car and they had probably done quite a serious amount of practicing before that particular race so it did help them quite a lot in that aspect but my i rating is quite low at the moment um with the uh formula um i rating compa in comparison to sports car because obviously road racing is now being split into two different licenses they have uh as of season two 2024 which has been a big plus obviously because it allows somebody like me to be able to go into a formula race not having 3k losing that 3k and then going back into let's say lmp2 or gt3 with a lower i rating of which i am clearly capable of driving better in those cars because that is what i normally drive now i can relax a little bit more and just gradually allow myself to progress and improve and get better so the second main car if you haven't guessed it already is the super formula lights and it's something that i am very much looking forward to i have driven some formula cars before not for quite a while uh, like on a consistent basis but um the delara uh, f3 was a favorite of mine on its release and i quickly actually got to a good pace with it i did when it originally came out but i didn't really properly stick with it for any longer than a full season and uh this is something that i do want to try and not do again um it's something that i'd have enjoyed quite a lot in doing um obviously another plan of mine down the line is obviously upgrading the wheel and upgrading the pedals with me starting a new job which i announced at the beginning of the video um is that by having a new job i now can start saving more money to be able to do that and i'm very much looking forward to this season uh for a few reasons obviously um it's going to be interesting to see how much rating i can do 
while holding down a job obviously with me being in a side of a brand new job they're gradually um allowing me to like you know do what hours that they feel i'm capable of doing because obviously i haven't been in a job for a while um they're not uh pushing me too hard which is great but and they're gradually easing me into it so obviously as i get um as I get more used to the job and they feel like I'm actually progressing quite well, they will obviously give me more hours. But if obviously if I don't want too many hours of which, like, let's say, for example, um, I could do enough hours to cover, let's say, four days a week. If that's all I want, I could potentially say that to them and they would be OK with it. Um, what I can't do is say what days I'm available and what days I am not obviously and that is another reason to why i am not um looking at the rpm gt3 league championship um as a priority because if i am needing to work on a wednesday that means i can't actually participate in the league race obviously so i don't want to ultimately commit to um rpm when i'm not able to due to work commitments so i have already told the league about it they are fine with me still holding a full-time spot um obviously if i realize that this is a routine of where i am not able to work wednesdays it will be around about then that i will say look there's no point in me just continuing to hold this full-time slot i am better off going over to the reserve list and just giving the full-time spot to somebody else and I will say when I'm able to race. So I'm basically holding down the full time spot for now with uh, the outlook of if I am able to race on, on a good amount of Wednesdays, then I will. But it also will depend on how I feel with racing a GT3 car as well, because GT3s aren't going to be a main priority for me for this coming season. So, but yeah, so those are the two main cars it's the lmp2 and the super formula lights with obviously with me um having a job as well obviously means that i might not have so much time being at home which obviously is a good thing i've not been working for several months so it can only be a good thing but obviously with that big change does mean that i will need to make some changes with regards to content so it's something to that way i'm not pressurizing myself quite so much but it's something as well that I am able to have some level of consistency because that is something that I feel like that is a good habit to have. And I've always enjoyed content creating as well in general anyway. So I've decided that from this season going forward, and this will be the case for this week in particular as well, that I am only going to be uploading two YouTube shorts per week. So I'm going to be uploading one, uh potentially um to like coming up to the midweek and then another youtube short will come out potentially over the weekend most probably saturday because with the type of delivery job that i have because obviously i'm working um where i am i am going to be mostly busy i would believe on fridays and saturdays and Obviously, that means that I won't be streaming on those two days specifically, uh, typically. So, but yeah, it should be uh, quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, so two YouTube shorts I'm going to be aiming at um, from this week going forward. So, um, so starting from next week, there will be two YouTube shorts going up per week. Um, a main video per week is potentially not going to be happening every single week and the reason for that is because if there are times of where um i might not necessarily always have the time to be able to race then i'm not going to be trying to force it and then worry about oh i'm not going to have a video out in time so a full length video per week isn't necessarily going to happen every single week but if there is an interesting race um, to that is available to be put out, then I will put it out, of course. But I'm not going to be 
going into a race on the outlook of I need a video. You know, that's just not going to happen, really, to be honest. You know, the stress, like, it's not like it's stressful or anything. Um, but really, my priorities need to lie with, you know, my seriousness needs to be with the job. When I'm, when I'm doing sim racing or recording, even, or streaming, that needs to be a bit more fun. That does in general. And so, like, I don't want to be putting added pressure onto myself when I don't necessarily need to. You know, like, content creating isn't a job for me necessarily. Um, you know, as much as maybe we would all love it to be, you know, at the end of the day. But I would still want to be able to enjoy it, I do, at the end of the day. And so, that's why I've come to that decision. So, there's not going to be a guarantee that there will be a full-length video every week. But if there is going to be one, I will be looking out to put one out possibly on the Sunday uh, for each week. If there is one that I could potentially put out. But it obviously does go on depending on uh, what availability I may have. Because from one week to the next, I might be asked to do more hours potentially uh, for one reason or another, which I need to make myself available. And that's another reason behind it is that if I do need to work a little bit more just to help out a little bit more, I need to be ready for that. And that is, at the end of the day, where I'm going to be earning my money. If I was obviously earning money by doing content creating, I would be doing a similar thing, you know, but I'm not earning money by doing content creating. And that is the whole reason why it should be there, really. Um to be fun at the end of the day so that is my uh, main term goals really for this season obviously some of it is a bit more personal some of it is with iRacing but another thing is obviously like I said I want to try and upgrade the wheel and pedals but that is where earning the money comes in so once I've earned enough money that I can go okay I can get this it may not happen for at least another season so by the time that we come up to season one 2025 i may still have this same setup but i might be getting close to that point of going i can actually get rid of all of this and actually get a proper wheel and pedal setup of which is much better and obviously while i love this rig so so much the only issue that i've ever had with it and it's not really even anything to do with the rig and that is that for me to be able to reach the wheel, I have to be fully forward in the seat. I do. So this is far forward as the seat goes. But because of that, I'm then a bit too close to the pedals. And that is because the wheel doesn't come out enough. So when I do go ahead and buy um, a brand new wheel, a brand new set of pedals, I should not be having that same issue, hopefully, anymore. So by doing all of that, I can then pull the seat back a little bit further forward um, within the rig. And then I'm not so close to the pedals, which means I'm a lot more comfortable. I have a little bit more flexibility because obviously you can't see it. But whenever I'm doing some racing um, in this rig at the moment, and it has been for the past year, is that my knees are bent. So that means I don't have my legs fully stretched out whenever i'm racing but hopefully once the changes come through with getting a brand new wheel a brand new set of pedals i will then hopefully should be able to have that much more flexibility um but yeah it should be uh, quite a fun season ahead though um i'm very much looking forward to it obviously uh first and foremost um but obviously it's not going to be the easiest of uh, seasons in general because the goals are going to be scaled up a bit on the high side. But it's going to be a matter of if you if you are capable of doing it, you know you can do it, then show it. And that's what I plan on doing. So I'm going to end this video there though because it's uh, almost half an hour. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have watched it to the end, uh, leave a comment and just say, you know, something like, you know, I've reached the end of the video, you know, what did you think 
of um some of the plans that i have for this season what are your plans for the season ahead let me know down in the comments below if you have enjoyed uh today's stream uh video then please give a like on the video it does help out a lot and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see some of my opening races for the season ahead but otherwise i'm gonna leave it there hope you enjoy the rest of your day see you guys next time